Hi, this is Chippy Neko or the Dragon Lady, depending on what channel you're watching this video on. Time has went by since my previous video on the Kappa situation, and I have since marked those videos as private because I consider that information to be old news, and I have gotten some more information to go by. There is good news to report, but there is still some work to be done. Videos about Kappa have been showing up left, right, and center, which is great because it is creating awareness and starting conversations conversations that even the FTC is getting involved in. Now, before I go any further, I have to make a disclaimer that I am not a lawyer. This video is not legal advice. This is information that is based on my research and on my own opinion, an educated opinion, but still an opinion nonetheless. There's a wonderful video done by Cree Craft, and I will have a link to it in the description below, and he is a fine example of being proactive with the COPPA situation. He's had a conversation with the FTC and will still be meeting with them in the near future. So to sum up the conversation, nothing the FTC said to Creek surprised me at all, but it is still concerning. The good news is the FTC is sure that they're only going after clear cut cases of kids content and are not going after the gotcha cases that everyone's so worried about. As far as fines are concerned, they confirm that what I've been saying in my previous video that it will be based on a formula depending on the content creator situation. The FTC stressed that they're not out there to get people with fines. Uh, odds are small cases would only be hit with a warning and if a fine were to be implemented, it would not bankrupt or ruin someone's career. Basically enough to say, don't do it again. So this is the part of the video where YouTube is not going to be happy with me. Long story short, YouTube has had their hands caught in the cookie jar and this is not the first time I called them out for it. Right now as more information is getting out, YouTube has more to answer for than the FTC. The primary objective of the FTC right now is to make sure YouTube is not breaking the law. That's it. The problem is the FTC is not keeping pace with the changing technology. They said on the phone that they have no knowledge on how YouTube works as a website. I know, big surprise, right? But this is bad because it also means that they did not know how YouTube is going about with their COPPA compliance. YouTube is only giving content creators two options, for kids or not for kids. There is no general audience option, which under the law would make family-friendly content exempt from COPPA. The FTC stressed that while they cannot tell YouTube what to do with their business, they did say a general audience option can be added if YouTube so chooses. But YouTube is not doing that at least not yet. My guess on this is YouTube just wants to wipe their hands clean of the situation and pass a liability onto its content creators. So maybe, maybe they're just using the FTC's lack of knowledge of the system to their advantage. Saying that if the content creator chooses the wrong option, they are free from any wrongdoing. I'm not saying this is true, but so far YouTube hasn't really done anything to convince me otherwise. I'm a very jaded person when it comes to corporations and with all the experiences I've had with this platform, I think I have every right to be. Now, this is the core problem I have at COPPA and I don't think it's being talked about enough and we really need concrete answers for. The FTC said if they find a video that's incorrectly labeled, they will send you a subpoena. And basically that would ask you to submit your demographics. The problem here is that we as content creators are not operators. We don't collect data, nor do we have the means to do so. That is all done by YouTube. The FTC are under the impression that channels are individual websites, which I firmly believe to be false. Under Title 16 of the COPPA regulation, Section 312.2 if you want to read along, operator means any person who operates a website located on the internet or an online service who collects or maintains personal information from or about the users of or visitors to such websites or online service, or on whose behalf such information is collected or maintained, where such website or online service is operated for commercial purposes, including any person offering products or services for sale through that website or online service involved in commerce. So based on the language here, there might be a gray area if you're peddling merchandise on your videos or taking kickbacks from other sites. I have no idea. But the regulation goes on to say, this definition does not include any nonprofit entity that would otherwise be exempt from coverage under Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. So the bottom line here is that we as content creators are the innocent party. YouTube is the website operator that provides a service in which we the public can sign up for. We content creators simply click on a link to upload a video to their servers and that's it. 
We don't collect anything from viewers and would not have anything to offer to the FTC if they were to request any information from us. The analytics would not count because one, we did not collect that data, and two, children lie when creating accounts, and the FTC knows this, which is why YouTube is in this situation to begin with. The only control we have is if a kid with its lack of better judgment were to enter their location in the comments. We would have the responsibility to delete the comment, ban the channel, and report that account to YouTube for them to delete. And then we have parents who really need to start taking charge of what their kids are doing online, and by acknowledging that by allowing your kids to use their adult account to view YouTube videos, you are providing consent. So parents, if you're not keeping track of what your kids are doing online, you don't get to complain here. I'm not trying to be mean here, it's just the day and age we live in now. When Creecraft explained to the FTC that we content creators do not collect data and would not be able to provide any, the FTC responded that they would get the information another way, but did not elaborate. This is very concerning, and I think this issue needs to be pressed more. The law as it stands now is severely out of date, and from what I can gather, content creators do not count as operators. And as someone who has studied and worked in IT, I really do believe this to be the case. So FTC, if you're watching this, please look into the regulation on what an operator is and clarify it. We really need to know. And if you do plan on going after individual content creators, what information will you be requesting and how will you be getting it? We have to know because if in the end you get this information from YouTube, it means that we as content creators are not capable of COPPA compliance and therefore should not have the fear of legal action looming over our heads. And YouTube, you need to implement the third option of general audience. The law says you can, the FTC says you can, and in the long run, it will offer you more protection than you think. Because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure the FTC can still go after someone if a general audience video is incorrectly labeled. Anyway, that's all I have to say on this matter. I'll have links in the description below on everything I talked about. There is still time to sign a petition and leave a comment to the FTC. And remember, be civil. So all of you have a wonderful day.